please help me welcome um, Simi Linton, who will be leading this conversation. Simi is a filmmaker and writer, and Nita Halder is an actress and a activist and who is uh, one of the people involved with the IMPWD program, I Know Persons with Disabilities, that was, she was, uh, I believe, representing AFTRA. Um, and SAG, um, the Actors Guild, on uh, this um, um, this this important um, uh, program to bring more access of actors into the mainstream um, films and television, um, and Zach Hudson, who's from Handicap International. Anita Hollander is also on our selection committee um, for the abilities here. And uh, I was very proud of all the, all the selections that we made here. Um, I will give you microphones. We're going to start with the city. seeing this film and I wrote to him to say that we were all going to be together watching it this evening and he sent a message which I'd like for you to read. Oops. Um, regarding the film, I would be glad if you can convey the following information. The film has been produced over a period of more than three years in the city of Maputo. That the film has been screened, open air screenings in football fields, marketplaces, and street corners in suburban areas of Maputo City, including the neighborhood where Victoria, Mariana, and Vasco live, and that informal debates were incentived afterward. That's a I'm quite sure what that means. Um, that I continued to work on the promotion of the film, and that the recognition of the film through its multiple selections and awards in very different parts of the world is also the recognition of the inspiring messages contained in the characters' stories and attitudes coming from Africa and with a universal appeal. Um, he also said that he would welcome feedback from this audience, and if anybody would like to send a message, to him, I'd be glad to pass it along. So, Anita and Zach, either of you would like to uh, weigh in here? Hello? Yes, it's on. Hi, I'm Anita, and uh, as it was a right, uh, for the I Am PWD campaign, inclusion in the arts and media of people with disabilities, I represented AFTRA as the chair of that, but I'm also the uh, East Coast National Chair of Performers with Disabilities for both AFTRA and SAC, Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Soon to be one union. Hopefully. And I'm on the national board of AFTRA, so yes, I've been very involved in merging the two unions. I'm also an equity member. And fortunately, I'm also a, a member of the cast of Musical Chairs, which you'll see tomorrow night. And I'm so proud of that film. Susan Sadlington. This was one of my favorites, this film you saw tonight, because, uh, because of its na international scope for us to be able to see what the culture is like in another country, um, its diversity aspect. I love these people. I've been watching this so many times, and, and I love them so much, and I, hopefully someday I'll get to meet them. But um, it's interesting how as much as it looks culturally, culturally so different from what we deal with living in New York or living in America, a lot of the same thing, a lot of the things they're saying aren't much different from what we ourselves think and feel. The reactions just coming on the bus tonight, I mean, you still, we still get the same kind of thing. We, we're lucky we don't get too many buses that pass us by, but I was in a wheelchair when I was pregnant, and buses passed me by in the dead of winter. So, uh, in fact, we, uh, we have many of the same issues, and I thought that the way they express themselves, and the dancing, we, we've done a lot of dance, Simi and I have done a lot of dance work, and uh, 
I just, I love watching them because uh, I've done some dancing myself and, uh, and singing and acting are my major things, but, but uh, I love watching that. And I'm very interested in, um, in hearing responses from people of what they thought and what they felt. And I hope you'll be able to talk to us as well. Hi, uh, my name is Zach Hudson, um, and I'm with a French organization called Handicap International, which has offices here in the States, uh, in D.C., and then runs programs in several countries around the world. Um, so thanks for having us here. Um, I, this is a great film festival, and this is a fantastic film, and I agree with Anita, my favorite part was the dancing. I thought that was really tremendous. Um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the programs that we run um, in Mozambique to kind of give... Um, a feel for the programming um, in that country. Um, we have offices in Maputo and then in several other uh, areas in more rural parts of Mozambique. And we run three different kinds of programs. And I'll just start by saying that the organization first started um, along the Thai-Cambodia border, uh, a group of prostitutes who were working uh, with Cambodian refugees who were landmine survivors. Um, and from there developed a program that dealt both with preventative work, uh, minefield clearance, and then also um, economic reintegration, psychosocial support, and, and physical rehab for landmine survivors, and then for others in the community uh, who had disabilities as well. So in Mozambique, uh, we have a program where we clear minefields um, in areas where there are still existing landmines from the conflict that was in the 80s. Um, Mozambique is a real success story in terms of minefield clearance. Um, the casualty rates are down to the single digits now per year, but they were in the hundreds back in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, so a tremendous amount of people were either killed or permanently maimed by landmines during that period of time. So we clear uh, the remaining minefields that are still there to prevent new casualties. And then we also conduct uh, survivor assistance programs. Um, so, for example, a, a program that might run a small microcredit loan, like an example like you saw in the film for a landmine survivor, um, or also um, doing some sort of psychosocial support, like we have run a few programs that were uh, soccer sports programs for people with disabilities. Um, and then we also run in Maputo um, a program where we build the capacity of local organizations who provide services to people who are affected by HIV AIDS. Um, particularly orphan children who have lost their parents, but also psychosocial support, microeconomic loans, um, and then also just building the capacity of local organizations to help um, them actually supply services within their community. And then finally also working and partnering with local organizations to run literacy programs for people who traditionally have had problems accessing education services in Mozambique um, because of various disabilities, so running literacy programs. So that kind of combination of different types of programming gives an example of the, of the type of resources that are available for people uh, with disabilities in Mozambique and the kind of programs that we run elsewhere. Um, if you want more information about this, you can ask me questions. If I don't know, I'll send you the right person. Um, but you can also check out the programs on our website, which is at www.handicap-international.us. So thanks. Um, one of the reasons that I find this film compelling and important for me to watch is um, the way it generates an, an identification, I think, as you said, with uh, the disabled people in the film. And um, it's also a film that looks out at the social positioning of disabled people in the society um, and, and looks at the obstacles that directly come from uh, their social signify their their signifiers, their disabilities, and their their uh, bodily configurations, and also because it is a film that speaks of community. I think of the films that we've seen here uh, so far this week, or the film I'm, I should say the films I've seen so far this week. There there have been some compelling individual stories. And one of the things that uh, that I feel strongest about feel strongly about about this film is the way that it shows uh, the bonding experience. Um, not disabled people like, bound together in our plight, but but coming together in a sense of community, in a sense of solidarity, in a sense of um, 
working together against the discriminatory forces that um, that often are the, the meat of our conversations. But then also to see uh, the creative output of a group of disabled people coming together and 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 using their bodies in very unique and interesting ways that are that are um, their own uh, expressions of how their bodies work and how they feel to them. So that's part of what made it exciting uh, for me. So shall we open this to uh, comments, questions, thoughts? Hi, yes, I'm Los Angela. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil and I worked with Mozambique for many years. Now, with, uh, supporting, working with uh, ADEMO, the ADEMO, the organization that just mentioned, TAMO, the Federation of Disabled People there, and also the Federation of Portuguese Speaking Countries, DPOs, Disabled People's Organization, uh, from other African countries uh, that speak also Portuguese. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, just watching the, the movie, it's interesting that, uh, you know, the main, the main message is that people are people and they face uh, the same things wherever they are. And uh, just uh, knowing Mozambique a little bit, I think it's interesting because, you know, you see people overcoming and again, working with the communities and just thinking that they have the same rights and they will find their ways through the, the processes when we know that there's nothing there. You know, this guy cannot use a wheelchair because the wheelchair will not go over the sand from his house to the car, etc. Uh, you know, even if you can have a donation of uh, artificial legs, it's much easier to not to use the legs and, and all this stuff. And people continue surviving and struggling where, you know, you my section there, you don't have any rehabilitation really in place from the government, you don't have education for the kids and all this stuff, and people are surviving. So people survive for sure. But I think that how and the stigma is really, really, really something strong. So how, my question for the director actually would be how the, the film is being used in the country and in other places to raise awareness. Uh, and what's the response they are having in terms of actually even commitment from uh, from governments, not just to say, okay, that's, wow, they are really strong, but okay, what's next, right? To, yeah. uh, to give uh, dignity uh, in another level for the people, not only killing a lion and everything, so. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you, I was so glad you're here tonight, and it's so great great to hear from you. And it's interesting, as you were speaking, I realized what I love so much about this is that it is from the perspective of the people with the disabilities. There's no narrator. There's no voiceover. And I've watched this so many times, and it was tonight that I went, you know what? There's no narrator. Nobody actually speaks for these people. They speak for themselves. And I love that that's what it is. But it took me what, four or five viewings to realize that we're hearing everything from their perspective. And I think I, I, that's a great question to ask the filmmaker as to how the, this film is being used to open people's awareness and raise openness. I just think with that last question about where you can go from there, um, I thought the beauty was that it shows that it's like these people are still finding that quality of life and that like the, the I don't know the truly meaningful stuff without you know even needing those next steps, um, which is I think the the truly inspiring fact about the whole movie and like the beauty of it is that you know like that they have all these circumstances that are you know, far less fortunate than what we have, but. You know, they still have the same problems and they're still finding ultimately, um, you know, the, the purpose in their lives uh, without these. So it's, it's inspiring to see that, to know, like, what the potential would be if and when they do, in fact, get that kind of support. Yeah.
One of the things I actually wanted to point out about the film is, first of all, on the cinematic level, just how beautifully shot this film is. It's a, it's a gorgeous film, and I think this film, um, both by the way it's shot and the way it identifies with its um, characters within the film, um, it definitely has potential as a mainstream um, film festival um, film. And um, by that, really, and this also goes back to the first comment, really, um, getting people talking and making raising awareness around the world. And I know this film is making attempts to get into um, film festivals based on its film merit alone. And um, that will definitely reach a, an audience that, um, that can get things moving a little bit. What would help? And now I have the mic. Um, one of the things that struck me about the film is the unfurling of the dancing. Um, it begins very slowly, and then suddenly, before you know where we are, we're looking at what looks like a rehearsal, and then it looks like we're in a performance. And um, at least I've been given to understand that there is a formation of a company coming out of this highly politicized narrative. And so one question I have is, and I don't expect answers to this, I'm just going to sort of like, Bounce them. Um, what is the dance doing there? Like um, artistically, why is is it is it that you know bodily movement is the quote unquote natural outcome of this kind of political flowering? And if it is, the second question I would have, you know, because we could have seen them in an orchestra, we could have seen them playing music, we could have seen them doing any number of things, we saw them dancing. So my simple first question is why dance? And then the next question that comes out of that is if dance is any kind of political motif going on there, do we need to worry uh, or ask questions about why the movement <coughs> vocabulary is technically um, more closely identified with um, North American modern dance? Um, and is that because there are different kinds of questions about cultural forms of movement that were not available or were kind of culturally taboo or not, not touchable in some way. Um, so, I mean, I'm just kind of curious about why why we went there. And there were so many places it could go there. It's beautifully shot, it's highly intentional. And what I don't, I don't yet have an understanding of is why dance, why this particular movement vocabulary, why here, why now, um, coming out of that. And my final thought is it's absolutely incredibly gorgeous. <laughs> May I respond to that? I would just like to add to that uh, comment because I was thinking about the film and along, along the lines of the dance as well. And that one of the things that I loved about this film was that we got to experience these people as individuals in their spirit first. That's right. And we saw the bodies were quite evident, but what was revealed to us in the course of the film was their soul. You know, and, and we, we, we developed a personal relationship with them along the way. And the dance for me at the end was quite a surprise. I hadn't seen it coming, nor was I expecting anything along these lines. And when they finally did congregate, I was pleased, for one, that they all knew each other. But more specifically, I felt that the dance was a, a simply a, a choice by which they all could participate and were simply asked to do, as I experienced it, anything they wished in terms of the movement. And that together it became very expressive and, and, and uh, exceptional in the fact that they were able to reveal yet something else about themselves through the movement. We have time for two more comments. Thank you. Uh, my name is Yuki Konde. I'm a dancer and senior. I said, living in a wheelchair. I'm from West Africa, Guinea Conakry. Well, the one thing I see, I see the guy have a wheelchair and what they're saying, but he don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the you uh, asking how he can be able to, to use this wheelchair and make, make it his best more happiness and smile. Thank you. Oh, could, could I? Hey, Siddiqui, mm -hmm. you work with Terry, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen you perform. He's, he's a magnificent musician. <laughs> Welcome. 
I'm not sure if this is what your question was, but as far as the wheelchair was concerned, he did mention that um, he likes to, he goes without it because first of all, he can't get on the bus. They won't let him on the bus, the whole problem of, and it's, I related to that because I wear my artificial leg when I do performance, uh, per acting in roles where I need to have a leg or for some reason having two legs means something or if I'm tap dancing as a nun, you know, it's easier on an artificial leg, but but in other performances and in my everyday life, I just don't wear it. Or even in playing um, Grisabella in Cats, I did it as a three-legged cat. And you know, the movement was much more interesting, much more beautiful than it would have been when I'm, you know, I control my artificial leg well, it's beautiful, it's great, it's lightweight, and all. but it's, it's a huge thing, and it, you're grabbing it and pulling it around you. I've seen you move, actually, when you just leave the chair behind and go on stage and you work. I do the same thing. And I think that's what he was saying, is that he sits in the chair. It doesn't really help him too much. He can go on his way. Watching this guy move the way he does, crawling you know, down the road, across the, the busy highway. I mean, I'm sitting there going, oh no, what's gonna happen? But then I think, but that's me too. It's like, I can get there faster if I just get on my crutches and go, you know, and forget about it, you know? And I love that he made himself some neat things. Like we all, you probably do too, I make myself armbands and anything that'll get you there easier that won't, you know, no, that won't irritate your skin or something. But I, it's a great point. But I also think I do relate to him just leaving the thing behind and moving whatever way. I think, I think you missed the. You missed I, I missed the point. Sorry. You missed the key word, which was the sand. The sand. I think it was about somebody has delivered him the wrong wheelchair for that place. Ah. Yeah, I know that there are beach wheelchairs. Got it. Thanks for thanks for clarifying. I'm so sorry. I just spoke for a long time on the wrong <laughs> See, I love you. I really think it's a couple of Well, first of all, I just want to uh, my name is Anna and I work together with Asangela and I want to appreciate um, everyone for the opportunity to see this uh, this movie and I know there are many others. Unfortunately I was not able to see but I definitely will. They are on our list. Um, my question was um, again, again about the dance. I was kind of surprised to see only one kind of disabilities in there. Um, I was thinking why there are not blind people also involved. Though I think yeah, we would see it a little bit differently. My, I was thinking why only one kind of disabilities. That's just how I'm thinking. So I think it's just a kind of combined idea of inclusion. So why we only or why not include it? People with, without disabilities. Right, right. There are, yeah, I mean, there are a couple of dances without disabilities, so, but it just. <coughs> it's not a question, it's just a comment. Thanks. Let's grab, uh, I'm sorry, one more comment uh, over here. I just, in the interim, I thought that there were many. It was a, a fairly wide variety. Granted, there were all people with mobility impairments, but there was a fair variety of impairments represented. Um, but I think the why is unanswerable. You know, I think that's, that's the way it is at that company. And I like them all. I like watching them all together and interact. But, yeah. um, hi, I'm Zoe. I'm actually also a filmmaker and journalist and spent a good bit of time in Mozambique working with Handicap International and they're more happy. Um, so it's something very, very close to my heart. Um, I love the film and I'm really excited. I actually love what the filmmaker said about that he's been showing it in football stadiums, in the country and in community gatherings because I think there's really two discourses now happening. And one is, I mean, the problem with a lot of African films is that they, they don't stay in the country. You know, the filmmakers, international filmmakers, circulate them in festivals. And um, it's so important to keep the discourse within the country to address the stigma that um, it, you know, it is so problematic there. But I think what I felt so much watching it here in New York is it's educating us on a completely different level as well. And the moment where she spoke about um, her relationship with her aunt, 
and the kinship ties, the community. Um, I mean, I set almost out of the discussion a stigma or even thinking about that to just a, a real learning experience. You suddenly realize that it's just opening your eyes to um, really a different way of civic participation. Um, so, yeah. I just wanted to throw in one thing. Sorry, talking too much. Sorry, but um, one thing I have not seen a lot of is um, people with mobility disabilities who have children, who have babies. And I have a 22-year-old daughter who I had on one leg, and uh, it, it's so wonderful to hear when when um, Victoria says that people think that. If you are pregnant and you have an arm, and you have one, a leg miss, a limb missing, or you have a disability, that for some reason you must have been duped. It must have been an exception. It must have been maybe you were raped. Maybe you know it, it couldn't possibly be because you met someone, you loved them, and you and had a baby, you know, got married. And, and I get this from cab drivers. I get this from people all the time on the street saying, "Wow, your your husband must be really special. It must be really great." So, uh -huh. And I spoke people in India, journalists in India who want to open people's eyes about this and he says, you know, it's uh, it's not done. You just uh, if you lose a limb, you're unmarriageable. You know, you won't be married and you won't be leaving the house much either or something like that. Um, so uh, I, I, I love that you're here also. It's, this is an audience full of really great people who know much more than I do about all of these things, but I loved that aspect of it. Simi, Zach, and Anita, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for being part of this conversation and for really adding so much to it. Um, at 8.45, we're starting Princess in this room, so we need to clear the room before so we can test, and uh, then you're all welcome back to um, see Princess tomorrow night. Of course, do not miss musical chairs. There are still some tickets left, so um, be sure to join us for that, and uh, you get to see uh, Anita um, up on the big screen. No kidding! Really? Sorry, you still after? Oh, great, so you're voting. Yes, please fill out survey forms. We love your feedback. Please give us survey forms. You can pick them up at the door if you don't mind.